Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Live to Roll channel. I am your host for the day, Brianna Wheeler, and we are back with another Women's Disability Show. Today's topic is wheelchair tips and tools. So I'm so excited because we're going to get to show you guys some pictures on the screen and just kind of give you guys some tips of what we do um, in different sections of our houses, like the kitchen, the bathroom, bedroom, not the bathroom, the bedroom and going outside and stuff like that. So we can get started. Unfortunately, Ashley is at an appointment today. You guys know how that goes. Um, you know, we can only get in certain times and Maya's running late from an appointment as well. So um, she might hop on a little bit more later and we can get, um, we can introduce her afterwards. So we'll go through and do introductions. Uh, my name is Brianna. I've been injured for five years. Um, I was shot and the bullets lodged in T12, fracturing L1 through L5. And today my quote is celebrate your personal victories because no one else understands what it took to accomplish it. So that's my quote of the day. Nikki, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Nicole, Nikki, and um, I'm a T6 paraplegic, um, two years now. My twin sister is a quadriplegic, so I'll be talking about some products she uses today as well. But uh, my quote is... I don't really like quotes, but I found one. And I, the way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you got to put up with the rain. Yes, I love it. I love quotes, so uh, I make them come up with quotes. <laughs> um, okay, Jessica, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Jessica Brito. I am a C7 incomplete, and I was injured 10 years ago after falling asleep while driving. Oh, my quote. Um... One quote that always keeps me going is, um, there is, there is only do or do not, there is no try. Um, and that's by Yoda. Yes. I love that so much. That's so cute. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys so much. So the first question that we're going to be talking about is what tools really helped us out in the beginning of our injury and what we used and what was like our first favorite things that um, really helped us or that we got. So we'll go through a couple of those. So the first one is going to be the grabber. Um, Sean will be showing pictures on the screen. So that's why I'll be saying them out loud and then he'll pop them up, I believe, somewhere. Um, in the meantime, we'll talk about the grabber. <laughs> so I think the grabber really, really helps because it basically extends your reach to get something. Um, and it just makes things picking up off the floor easier. Some of them have like magnets if you drop like your keys and stuff, which can get a little tricky. And there's some different like tools for that. But I love my grabber so much. Oh, there it is. Sean's popping um, one of them up. I sent them to your email, Sean. Maybe that's what you're looking for. Um, uh, so yeah, you can get them on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. Let me see, I have the price over here. $11.95 to get it. Um, and I love them so much. And so Nicole, how do you use your grabber? Um, well, I have like a few grabbers and I just keep them. Like I keep one in the bathroom. I keep one in my room and then um, Oh, those are the two. Those are two I have because I don't like to mix the bathroom with grabbing the other stuff. Mm -hmm. That's nasty. Mm -hmm. And so I keep like, them separate and they're also like different sizes, which I love. I don't know. I had one in the beginning that was pretty, really, really bad, but that's what you get for Amazon. You just kind of find them. So. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Sometimes I rather just get like cheaper things and make it work for the time being and then just get like a new one afterwards. Like that kind of is how I roll. Um, because sometimes I spend money on things that's, what are you saying? One of mine broke in like two weeks and, but it was, it was good, but it just wasn't like sturdy enough, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it depends on like what you're kind of using it for. And like, I be picking up heavy ass stuff with mine sometimes, <laughs> like dragging my bag and stuff like that. So like they break easily because the screws start like coming loose. But um, my dad always asks me if I need a new grabber because I like helps me. He ties a little like shoelace to the sh to the string to turn off the light and the fan when I'm there. And then the bed's like a bit away. So I'm able to like pull it off, pull the light when I'm ready to go to sleep instead of them having to stay up, which is really cool and helpful. Um, Jessica, do you use the grabber at all? 
I don't. I have to say that I, I mean, with my hands, I've kind of found some I can use, but they're just, they're pretty hard for me. So I don't really use grabbers. Um, I'm very comfortable with things falling on the ground and then I pick them up. So I turn everything into like a grabber, like spatulas or the broom and then just knock things down. And then I just pick it up because yeah, quad hands aren't great with grabbers. And I've never explored actually finding a grabber that would be helpful for a quad. But so far, I don't really use them. Yeah, for sure. I think that a lot of people use what is around them. And I think it comes with like experience after being in an injury where you just feel like your mind is more of like, how am I going to do this instead of I can't do this, mm -hmm. you know, and it's really cool to see kind of the difference because in the beginning, I would say I can't all the day long. Like I did never thought I could reach stuff, you know, and yeah, so these tools really help. And if you don't have them, like look around, see what you can grab, see what you can move. Um, sometimes even like locking your brakes helps me do a bunch of different stuff and moving a bit forward inside of my chair. I'm also a para, so my strength is a little bit more stronger than Jessica's is. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. And then the next first one that we use is going to be a transfer board. I think um, Sean found the pictures that I sent him. We'll see. And so the transfer board is like this wooden board that basically you stick underneath you and you put it from one surface to the next surface and it helps you go across them. So in the beginning, there it is. In the beginning, I think this is really helpful because you're not used to um, transferring with your arms. So you need to get like your strength of your arms up in the beginning, which I'm sure a lot of you guys know. So this definitely helps like get you comfortable with transferring. Um, so a lot of people use it in the beginning. Um, Jessica, did you ever use a transfer board with your function? I still do. Um, so at the beginning of my injury, my board, um, the one you showed has two holes. Um, my PT had someone drill one in the middle as well. So I had holes. Um, I find that the wooden ones are easier for me to use. And the reason why I had three was because I can't really grab, I can't really grab the board. So I would just slide my hand in the first hole to put under me. And then if I needed to put it a little more, then I would just put my hand in the middle one and pull a little more to place it. Um, now I still use it to get in and out of my car. I can get in and out of a car without it, but it's a mess. Like, if I get in a car by myself without a board because of my spasms, I'm likely to kick the chair away from me and end up on the floor. Um, so just a board makes it easier for me. And then, I mean, if people are around and they can hold my chair so that I don't push it away, um, then I can do the transfers on my own. But for car transfers, I still use my board. Yeah, I think if you need to use it, use it. You know, I just have more function and I was living my life as if I was a quad. So I was still getting help getting dressed. I was getting help doing all my care, showering until I joined the community and they were like, girl, you can do this by yourself, you know? And they taught me how to like use different tools and like really get my strength up and stuff like that. So after that, I just, um, I'm able to transfer more easily and I kind of became um, distant from the board, you know, but like with different levels, I yeah. think these tools are what, what they're for, you know. Um, how about you, Nikki? Do you still use your board? Yeah, so um, my sister and I both use the boards. We have boards all over the places around the, the house. Um, I use boards personally for like different reasons then Ashley uses it all the time like just because she's a quad so I think um you need it but I do use the slide board a lot I think it's just easier um and I'm a little baby actually like I know that I can do it without but I'm scared so the slide board for me is like a safety net when I was <laughs> practicing driving I used the slide board and there was no well 
I had to do it once without the sideboard and it actually wasn't that bad, but there's no way I would like do that if I was completely by myself because I'd be scared I would fall. So I was like, just the sideboard would be way better. But I did do it with someone there, but I would never. So like, yeah, I have a sideboard. We keep one in also in my dad's car. Like if he ever has to pick me up because he has like a high Jeep. So we also keep a sideboard in his car. That way I could like slide myself up when, um, so the sideboard for me is like everywhere. We have a ton. Nah. Yeah, I think they're super helpful. And it takes like confidence to be able to move like that. Like, I don't think pe able-bodied people really understand what it's like to ha not be able to feel the same way, you know? Like, even with my, I have a little bit of feeling, but it still doesn't feel the same way as I feel like the topper part of my body, you know? And so it's still like I'm floating and it, it's hard, you know? And in the middle, sometimes the gap between my bed and my chair it's so little but in the morning it feels so far away you know um so that really came from like a lot of practice and i did have people there by my chair when i was transferring and like my dad told me one time like how do you know you're gonna make that transfer and i was like i don't know i'm just need to try you know if i feel this way then i need to know i need to move my hand i need to move it also like um it's been a struggle for me having to transfer into different cars like having to transfer into um like a two-door theirs are like super wide and low some of them don't have handles on the top you know so you have so transfer boards are always good to have around you know until you get comfortable with yourself because you have to have that confidence um like within yourself to I be think like, i'm not gonna fall i think the funny thing that you just mentioned is the cars because i know that for me um the way that I learned that I don't absolutely need the board is the fact that I didn't have one and I had no other choice but to figure it out. Um, but when I travel, uh, sometimes if I'm going to be going in Ubers, just because I don't want to carry the board around, um, I've now gotten comfortable with doing the transfer without the board. I always transfer onto the floor of the car first and then the seat um, because again i don't i can't make that full jump because i'm a quad but i think when you're when you don't have sometimes when we don't have the things that we always use we're challenged and we just figure out how to do it without it um but like nikki said i i do feel way more comfortable with my board because the other day i was in texas on vacation and i had gone out with my girls and when i made the transfer i didn't make it so i was on the floor for a bit so <laughs> yeah that happens <laughs> i would love to see a video of your transfer because i think that that's interesting and i think it would be helpful for some people to realize that they can transfer to the floor to the car because a lot of girls um post it just from you know their chair to the car or with the transfer board you know so like if you're stuck and you forgot your transfer board um i think it would be really cool to see a video of how you transfer as well just a little side note there <laughs> Um, also, I want to say hi to the people in the chat watching us. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you guys have any tools um, or have any questions or want to know more about a certain topic that we're talking about, feel free to ask us and we can see it. So we'll be able to answer your questions and um, call out what products you're naming and anything like that. So I just want to say hi to you guys. And then I think we have one. Oh no, we have two more. Okay, so the next one is going to be the leg lifter and the pill organizer. So the leg lifter really helped me with to complete my transfers as well. So the sliding board and the leg lifter kind of go went together because it basically you loop it on your foot and then you're able to pull your foot into the car or onto the couch or whatever you need to like complete that transfer. So in the beginning, that really, really helped me out. And it did help me also, um, I used it as a grabber as well sometimes because you can like, the one I got, you can bend it and um, it shows, I mean, it changed the shape. So I was able to like wrap it around things and stuff like that. So that was super helpful for me. And then the pill organizer, um, the one that I that I put on the screen, hopefully Sean can get it up. Um, it has like little pockets for you and you can find them on Amazon um, three times a day ones. Um, sorry, Sean sent me a message. And those are really helpful for medications 
um, just to stay organized. I also say to get like a journal and a calendar in the beginning, your mind, you, you're going to be flooded with doctor stuff and terms and all. And I think that writing it down and keeping track of your appointments and stuff like that really is helpful in the beginning because it can be really overwhelming. Um, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts about that. Um, do you guys use medication? Um, um, so loops, I used to use them all. I used for everything. I had like a, not just a loop for my leg, but I had like a ladder that my PT created where we would kind of wrap half of it under my bed and then the other half on top. And then I'd kind of just like pull my way up so that I could sit up because I couldn't sit up on my own or even crawl up on my own. Um, so I use different types of like leg loops, ladders. I remember feeling like my legs were the heaviest thing on earth. So even like now I could just pick up my leg and cross it. But I used to use it even for that because they were just so heavy. And then, and same thing, we learned tips on how to do it, like to cross my leg now. I'll scoot a little to the edge of my seat, my knee, and then kind of fall back into my chair so that the momentum helps me pick up my leg. Um, but yeah, at the beginning, I used the loops a lot. It's an organizer. I don't want many medications, which helps. Um, with my ADHD, it's really hard for me to remember things like medication. Um, or just staying organized with medication. So I recently got one, um, just to, and not even, I got it not to remember my medication, but vitamins. Like I wanna be one of these people that takes vitamins every day and I forget. Mm -hmm. So, but then I filled it up one week because I was very pumped, <laughs> but I can't say I kept up with it. So I'm the same for some reason, I can't keep up for one, vitamins. Right? And I want to so badly. I, um, yeah, I want to be one of those people. I, me too. I totally agree. <laughs> I want to be one of those people too. I like take vitamins that are really healthy, you know, and like grow yeah. strong. Um, I don't know why it's so hard for me. And I don't know why even like eating healthy, I, I feel like so tempted by fast food. And I'm just like, ugh, you know. It's a struggle, but I feel like as getting older, we are not like really taught how to take care of our bodies. And so it's so important, these things, you know, and like, um, we're just not used to it. Do you take vitamins, Nikki? Yeah. I, oh, I, feel like I Nikki take does. vitamins and a few on like supplements during the day. But again, I've been on my, like on and off of my health journey, so to speak for a couple years now so okay for me, did and did your um did your injury play a role in that or were you already like not really taking stuff before i say it's funny because i did i um got into it probably like four or five months before i got injured mm -hmm. and i was getting into that i was literally like meal prepping going to the gym like trying to like get in shape. So I feel like maybe it prepared me for it. Little did I know. <laughs> and now That's so funny. Like, I've spoken to nutritionists and I've like researched a lot, of, like, you know, with our injury, this is like a side note from the topic, but with our injuries <laughs> and doing the body and stuff, it's, it's good to eat right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's definitely um, hard. I agree so much. So Sean is having a hard time finding the photos that I sent him, but no worries. Um, we will just talk about it. And then hopefully I can put in some links in the description afterwards. I'll also add some different links to some helpful websites because I know that it's really hard to find websites that are helpful and post as different tools and stuff like that. So I'm gonna put some resources after our video into the description for anybody watching afterwards or anybody watching right now, if you wanna come back and check it out, totally feel free. Um, I think that they're really, really helpful and really, really amazing links. Um, Let's see what's going on in the chat real quick. So we have 
Andrew Hunt, I find it difficult transferring from the ground to chairs. Yeah, that's really difficult. It really takes a lot of arm strength and practice and learning like what's best for your body. I think transferring from the floor to the chair. Um, Jessica, have you tried with your um, arm function? Can you do that transfer? No, and you know, like the really hard thing is my body is like on proportion, like my waist is small and my hips are really big. So I get really close to try to lift myself. And then my hips hit, they like hit the chair. I don't know how to describe it, but my trainers have really tried. And the best thing I have learned is how to teach people to get me up. I think, um, so again, I just fell the other day. I was in Texas and the ground is like all like cobble. And I hit a dip and I flew. And, and um, right away, I just got two guys to come over and do a two-man transfer. Because, I mean, a lot of times, just learning to direct your care is really important. Because they don't know how to pick us up. Um, I spasm a lot. So if you try to pick me up and you don't do it right, I become really stiff. And I just get super heavy. Um, so I just had to learn how to direct my care, um, letting them know, always keep my knees as close to my chest as possible so I don't kick you and so I don't get heavier. But I'm just, I'm 10 years in, so I'm really comfortable at just calling random people and having them pick me up um, because, yeah, I can't get off the ground. It's pretty, it's really hard. Yeah, I think you touched on something really important, which is helping direct your care. Um, I think that's really important. When you're confident, other people around you are going to be confident. So just keep mm -hmm. that in mind. I think that's really important. Um, so that's what's else going on. So we can move on. Um, little money. What? Hello. Always a great time to listen and learn. Thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Miranda, I need to find more grabbers. Thanks for letting me know. I can get them on Amazon. Yes, Amazon is great. Sometimes you have to type in different keywords to really find what you want but um i think there's a lot of great stuff on there um amber showing up to support my fellow will friends great feed thank you so much for watching mickey i just bought a special light bulb that is in my bedside lamp that i can turn off and on with an app from my phone i've heard about those the smart things oh stuff God. yeah they have them for um phones for like camera systems for like different stuff you can like connect your air conditioner to it there's all kinds of different stuff that you can connect now and the bulbs actually they're not that expensive i don't think mickey if you could put where you got it at i would appreciate that um al m hill hi everyone happy thursday hello um let's see andrew huh is everyone having a nice day um i think that's for the chat but for us we are having i'm having a great day thank you for asking um, Mickey said you have to get into a routine and take your vitamins and supplements in the morning. I know oh, you do need to do that. To do it, <laughs> I know I'm gonna put it on my to do list. <laughs> I need to go buy some and just maybe just put them in my face, you know, um, so that I can remember to take it. And Peter said the cheeseburger, best vitamin in the world. <laughs> I agree <laughs> for real. DoorDash be getting me sometimes. Okay, so moving on um, to some more of the products. Let's see. I also had added, um, let me bring it up on my phone so I can talk about it one second. Oh, the drop foot. So when I was first in the hospital, they gave me like this big boot for my drop foot. It was humongous and I hated wearing them so freaking much. Um, I don't know, Nikki and Jessica, did you guys get um, drop foot boots or no? So I did. And so I have sensation and I drop foot. I rather be in the chair all day than laying down because, you know, the, the foot plate keeps my, my foot in place. Um, but when I'm in bed, the drop foot really hurts. And what I found, um, sorry, I didn't get you pictures. I thought. We were just doing chair stuff. <laughs> um, okay. So I'll see if I can. I'll see if I can get you guys some info. But at Target, they have like actually everywhere. I think CVS has them too, 
where I just have a little boot that just the plastic is just the front of my foot and then I strap it around and it keeps my foot up and it hurts otherwise um but yeah, they're yeah. tiny those big boots that I used to have to wear I hated them uh, but my aunt, I can't sleep without something and it's literally like a sock so yeah I'll have to check really that out that's super cool I have kind of one like that that's like a little strap um how about you Nikki do you use any drop foot boot or no no, I mean, in the hospital, I used the boot, but it was just when I laid in bed. I never used it, like, in my chair or anything. Uh -huh. So for a while, I would just, like, put a pillow and, like, prop it up. But um, I realized that that doesn't really work. I'm going to try to see if it will show you guys on the screen so you guys can kind of – oh, yeah, you guys can kind of see. So it's like – Oh, a, yeah, mine, like it's, mine's similar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think this is so way more helpful. You can find them on Amazon as well. They're about $24. You can get them in different colors. And I think that those just help you feel a little bit more yourself. Like it feels like a little bit more like a brace than like a huge ass thing on your foot, uh, which I would just hate so much to do and like have to strap it on and do all this crazy stuff with it. So this is a great option to use um, for drop foot if you guys are interested. I really do um, recommend everybody taking a look at it because over time our feet do drop and I do hear that it's hard to get it back up once it does get really bad. So I would say just be cautious of it, you know, um, yeah, I think that's important. And then the um, last thing I had was just a handheld and handheld mirror that I also found on Amazon. That really helped me in the beginning too, just to see like my sores, to check myself out, calving stuff, anything. Um, you, you know, it just it really comes in handy. And I think like a really lightweight one with a handle really helps um, a lot. Do you guys use any handheld mirrors? Jessica? I used mine um, at the beginning when I was learning to cast. Um, I actually have sensation, so casting wasn't too bad. But, I mean, casting was horrible. Let me take that back. But <laughs> knowing, when, knowing when I got the catheter in the right spot, I could feel it. But at first, I, I liked the mirror so that I could see what was going on because there's a lot going on. So... That was basically what I used it for. Yeah, I totally agree. I love handheld mirrors. I think that mirrors just really come in handy all the time. Um, so moving on to the second question, we're talking about just our wheelchairs, what attachments really help us, what style that we have, and different stuff like that. Um, so there was only a couple pictures for this one as well, which we'll go to Jessica first. You have gri gripped um, rims that you added onto your chair. Is that what the picture is? Yeah. Jessica? So my rims are coated with a rubber um, that reduces the amount of uh, force that I have to put on them to push. And I've had different ones. If you put me in a manual wheelchair with no coating on the rims, I will get nowhere I, i'm really strong but i mean i don't have i don't once i'm in a chair without grip it's really hard for me um and then i use also gloves that have grip so they kind of um will stick to each other and it just makes it easier to push but even when i don't have my gloves as long as i have the grip on the rim and we there's different coating that you can get there's different types um, the ones that I've been using lately are called Blacks, and they're a little pricey. I know there's there's a company where you can just kind of, um, you kind of just, it, it, they don't have to be fully installed. Anyone can place them, whereas the Blacks have to be installed. Um, and those seem to work well with quads too. I, I'm probably going to try those next, um, just because they're, they're, a uh, cheaper version and these are ridiculously expensive but um when i got the chair medical did cover it because of the fact that i'm a quad yeah i was just gonna mention that a lot of these things are really expensive but with like help of resources or even sometimes insurances insurance doesn't always cover it 
but um, a lot of the times that you can get different stuff covered, you know, so before you spend your money, the Triumph Foundation, which is Southern California, they always say this, like, look around, ask people, check on OfferUp, see what different stuff, check Amazon, because sometimes the first thing that they present you with is not the best for you. You know, a lot of the things that I got in the hospital or were recommended in the hospital, I never used or were not helpful at all. And it was really the community that helped me. So that's why um, I'll definitely add those links in the bottom. And if you are in the Southern California, Triumph Foundation does amazing, sorry, my dog is acting crazy right now. Um, the, the Triumph well, Foundation does help give grants. Yes, Jessica, where are you? I think they do, they do all of California and then, I know right now there are talks about doing other states. Um, obviously, California will be priority. Um, but, you know, Brianna's totally right. The only reason I know that these are the groups I need is because someone who's been injured 30 years told me. So um, reach out to any of us. Reach out to Triumph. Reach out to different organizations that um, have people that can help out because we've already been through it. So... Yeah, I totally agree. I'm going to try this button really quick. Um, Sean told me to try to share my screen. So let's see what happens when I push this. Oh, interesting. Let's see if I can show the picture. It's kind of small. Can you guys see it right on the screen or is it still really small? I don't see anything. Don't see anything? Oh, maybe it has to be like this. Okay, we'll just leave that. We'll we'll just have to link some stuff um, afterwards. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so let's see. So yeah, those wheels are from. Let me tell you guys the website since we don't have the pictures. Of livingspinal.com which is also a really good website for just different products and stuff like that and also some of the product some of the links that i'm going to link below. Like I said, you don't have to get it. Oh, there we go. Sean got it up. Um. You don't have to get it from that place, you know, like we said, like look around because sometimes in the like the prices are really expensive and you're like, whoa, you know, like how the heck I'm going to afford this. I've definitely been there, you know. Um, so, yeah. Oh, Maya joined us. Sorry, Maya. I was so distracted with trying to get the pictures up. I didn't see you, love. Um, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, and no problem. I was definitely listening to listening to the conversation. Um, my name is Maya. Uh, I am new here on the show. And I will be here every third Thursday, uh, which is awesome. I'm really excited that Brianna um, asked me to come on here. I'm super excited to let you guys know a little bit of, more about myself and uh, get to know some of you guys and give some great tips that I've learned um, throughout my injury. Um, I am a C5, C6 quadriplegic, and I've been injured for three years. My life day was actually just three days ago. So, um, you know, here's to three years. So, um, yes, I, I love that you joined us. Um, and happy late, 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 late life day. Um, my life day just passed too, so I love how close we are. Um, and those are always fun to see your milestones. You've done so much in the three years. So I met you when you were about a, a year out, right? Yeah, it was like, like seventeen months. Yeah, so and she got early. flown out to the Rolls experience from Chicago to California, and she came out and danced and was just um, flourished in the community. So now she's an activist and helps out and is just a leader, which is so cool to see. Um, my favorite thing is watching girls grow and watching people find themselves in this community. I think it's really amazing. Um, so I have a special place in my heart for my always. And before her, I didn't really know anybody else with a gunshot wound. So I feel like we have a little bit of a special relationship having that kind of traumatic accident happen. All our accidents are traumatic, but you know, like a traumatic violent accident. Um, so Erica, unfortunately, she had a new schedule for school, so she can't join us anymore on Thursday. But thankfully, Maya accepted our invitation, and I'm so excited to have her. So I'm glad she could join today. <clears throat> So right now we're uh, talking about wheelchairs right now, Maya. So the second thing is going to be the uh, gloves. And I'm um, trying to be popping those up soon. And Jessica, you want to talk about these gloves a little bit that you sent over? Do they help you push as well your wheelchair? 
Yeah, so gloves for life are actually gloves that were invented by someone who is a quadriplegic, well, the mom of a quadriplegic, and um, it's the rubber on the middle of the glove really kind of just grips to your wheel and gives you that extra push. Um, um, so I'm really bad at wearing my gloves, but if I'm doing anything far or a lot of miles, I'm going to the beach sometimes and doing like seven miles, then I'm definitely going to be wearing my gloves. Can you guys hear me? I can't hear you guys. Is it me? Oh, no, I no, think it was me. Was I muted? You guys couldn't hear me, huh? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> That's so many. Okay. I was hearing a little bit of an echo in the background, so I didn't know where that was coming from, so I was trying to figure it out. So, Maya, do you use these gloves at all? So, I'm actually terrible with the gloves, but I have these rib grips on my um, push rooms as well. They're a little different. Uh, they were made by an army vet who's a quad and they're super expensive as well. They're like $179 for the pair. But with those, I don't have to use um, my gloves at all. I actually mm -hmm. don't even know where they are. <laughs> Yeah, so um, different rims definitely help. Different tires definitely help you. Um, it changes everything. There's like ones that are bouncier. There's ones that have more grip on it. You know, um, putting air in your tires is really important, which is something I'm really bad at. Um, so I think it's important to like find a little small air pump on Amazon as well and like a basketball one or something just so that you could carry it around in your car so you could fill up your tires when they're getting a little bit low. I think that's really important. When my dad fills up my tires, it just feels like I'm gliding all of a sudden, like I'm barely like even on my wheels and I'm like, woo, you know, because when you're when your tires are flat, I don't move as fast. So I think it's so funny, but um, yeah, something to keep up with and a little bit of advice. So the next picture that we have is the brakes. Um, so I personally like the scissor brakes that they're called and they pop in and out this way instead. Um, I used to have ones that went that went like down this way, but I would get my thumb caught into it when I was pushing and that really, really hurt. Um, so I was blessed and got donated these types of scissor brakes, which are about only $40. It's really cool. And they um, help me out a lot. I really love them. So do you guys use any specific type of brakes, um, Jessica? Um, I can't do the scissors. They're really hard for me to lock them. Um, so mm -hmm. I prefer down just because I kind of just, I hit them and put all my weight into them. So they lock. Um, and to pull up, I, just, I use the back of my arm. I use this and my two so I just use my two releases to get them unlocked. I had the what are those that they kind of just go under and they lock? Um, I almost got I didn't even know what these ones were called, the scissor breaks, until I, I had to look them up. I was <laughs> trying like different type words to try to find them. Yeah, for quads and paras, it's definitely different because these are really hard to lock and unlock, especially when I have a lot of air in my tires. Um, Nicole, do you have any specific type of brakes or do you know if Ashley has any? So my brakes are like against the wheel. I don't know what they're called, mm -hmm. but they're against the wheel and it just like snaps. These back. are the scissor ones. Can you see them? Um, yeah, those are the scissor ones. Are those the kind that you have or no? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> they go it's okay. Uh -huh. they're, they're cool. They actually just got tightened. And when these type of brakes are tightened, they're pretty like tough. But I needed them to be tightened because they were all loose. It'll loosen up over time. But these brakes do loosen. I feel like it lasted like seven months, and then I had to get them tightened. And then my sister uses a power chair, so hers is all. And always remember to turn off your power chair. 
because she always keeps it on and runs into things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. Um, I remember one of my friends, she was newly injured and she had a power chair at the time and she would like lift it up and down like it goes, but she would like be bumping into the tables and like lifting up the table when, when she would go. And so it was so funny because her parents would just be like, oh my goodness, like calm down, wait. <laughs> she was just bumping into everything with that thing. So funny. Um, so yeah, that helps. And then um, Maya, do you have a different brakes for your manual wheelchair to help you like push them and break them into spots? Yeah, so um, I have the brakes that also go down um, like Jessica was talking about and I have brake extenders on them. So it's like kind of, they're like, I don't know, probably about like this long and it extends so I can reach. But on the same page, I just got like I just came back from my wheelchair appointment right now and I got new locks because my locks were broken and they were stripped. And I legit cannot even press the lock. I couldn't lock my chair. I was like, uh help. <laughs> so they're super tight. But they'll loosen up in a couple of days, I think. I hope. <laughs> Yeah, they do start listening up. I, I would say, like, listen them a little bit. Like, it's hard to get them, like, in that perfect spot where it's um, not hard enough for you to push it, but it also keeps your wheel in lock. Because if it's too loose, your wheels will move. So that's also a struggle with brakes. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree. And uh, so, what you said, we said, if our air, if our air tire's too low, our brakes won't catch either. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree. Um, and then I just want to shout out Ashley up in the chat. She said, my chair, my choice. Snap your fingers, girl. That's right. <laughs> okay, so the next thing that um, I added was the bags for the wheelchairs. So these little bags as well, I get on Amazon and there's one that goes underneath the chair and then there's one that goes like right kind of in the front. And the, that one I use, that one's just a fanny pack that I got. And so the fanny pack just goes right there and I loop it around my chairs and it's just perfect to have keys, you know, tissues, wet naps, anything inside quick. I think the bottom one, oh, we have them up on the screen right there. The bottom one is good for like water bottles. If you're going for a long day out, just to have any extra medicine inside of there, anything like that. I think it's so helpful. Do you guys have any bag attachments to your chair, Nikki? So I don't have any bag attachments. Be I don't, but I do carry a bag with me at all times. That's the same thing. And I put it behind on my handlebars. Um, it just has all the essentials. And then I was always a purse person. So I carry my, I like to purses for accessories. So I usually wear a purse and it's like a little fanny pack. I find really cute ones, but that's like how I store my stuff. I don't really like things on my chair. Like even my cup holder. I. I didn't like when it stuck out and I found one that was more like closer to the chair. I just don't like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, it can be hard to get used to, but those bags like on the back and like over you, those are cool too. I switch my bags out. So depending on what I'm doing, I really keep my bags on my chair. And honestly, when I'm taking pictures, I usually take off most of my attachments um, as well. So that's another thing, you know. Um, and and I think Maya, you sent in some a bag as well that you carry over you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's go to the cup holder one. I have one of the cup holders actually. And this one is a fabric cup holder. So the fabric, this is just personally what I like. I talk to different people that like harder ones, you know, if they're used to getting big gulps, they like different sizes, different versions, you know. Me personally, I like the fabric one because I bump into stuff like crazy and I break the plastic ones so easily. Like I have went through like three or four plastic ones already. So my dad finally got me this fabric one and it works so great for me so I really love it a lot it's not expensive it comes in different um, sizes um Jessica do you use a cup holder I don't I'm every time I like almost spilling a drink I think to myself I really need to get one um so I put everything between my legs and my my legs spasm in so they always stay tight um and then the only problem with that is if your drink is too hot or too cold, you can't really do it. So I will look into that. 
Yeah, I'm a coffee fiend. So I used to have my stuff in between my legs here on the side of me as well. But I mean, I spilled so many times or even like I've had it on the side and then I go to bend over and it just like pushes it out and it just spills everywhere. So that's why my family was like, girl, here's a present. You need a cup holder. And that's why they got me one. But I really love it. It helps me a lot. Um, I use it a lot. Um, how about you, Maya? Do you use a cup holder? I don't use a cup holder. Um, I don't drink anything but water, really. So I just always have my water bottle on my lap. Plus, my mouth is always so dry because of the medicine that I'm on that I can't be like five minutes without my water bottle. I'm always sipping water. <laughs> so, but I should look into one yeah. though. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. I think water is so important and I agree. I'm always thirsty as well, but I have um, a habit of like wanting like to be up, you know, so that's why I lean towards coffee and energy drinks and stuff like that, which is not the best for you. I know, I know. Um, okay, so our third one, um, I mean, our picture, I'm talking about our picture, not our question, is going to be the phone holder. Um, so this phone holder, it's a little bit more than I really like to spend on stuff, but um were you going to say something, Nicole? I was going to share my cup holder. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no. This is, it's cool. Maya might like it, too. So, I like I said, I don't like things on my chair. So, I found a cup holder that, like, is, like, you can kind of take it apart. So, there's one part that's attached to my chair, so I can't show that. But this part just slides into there when I want a cup holder. Because a lot of times, like, my I carry mine. But if I'm out and about, I don't like stuff on my lap because it just always seems to fall. So then you just put the cup in there and you go like that. And I love it. Yes, I love that too. I had that one for the fourth question for you. Sorry, I wasn't trying to skip you. I had your cup holder. There it is. Um, I put it in with the food and the drink. Sorry, I didn't realize that it was like a, a holder to go on your wheelchair. But that's so cool. I love that um, so much. Okay, so the phone holder now... The phone holder was a lifesaver for me when I first got it. I love this thing so much. So it is a little bit more pricier. Mine got donated for me. It has like a little sticky part on it, but I put two different kinds for you guys to, to check out. And those are just really cool to have by your bed, to have just anywhere that you need um, and to hold your phone in place. It, it, it's great for recording videos. You know, it really helps a lot. Maya, I think I told you about this as well. Do you have one of these? Uh, you did tell me about it and I have not bought one. Um, I still just have my phone like on my lap, but I did get like a little pop socket. So that really helps me out a lot with holding my phone and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of people get that type as well. Um, Nicole, do you use a phone holder at all? I do. I think there's a picture. I forgot about that because I usually use it when I go rolling, but it hasn't been nice in Chicago, so I haven't even gone. I forgot about it. But it's, mm -hmm. I looked up on Amazon. It's like, I think it's called a running phone holder, and it's like goes, it's like a lanyard, and you could put your phone in it. Oh, cool. And cool. Yeah. I it, like when I'm like rolling and I want to stop and check my phone really quick, it's like easily like available instead of like in my purse or something. So that's yeah, I love that. That's pretty cool. And does Ashley have one as well? No, she just always has her phone on her lap. She never drops it. I'm surprised. But I dropped my phone too many times before I decided to look up, like, what does Amazon have for your phone? Yeah, for sure. She should look up this as well because I know a lot of quads really, really like this attachment. Whenever I go to events, people are always asking me about it. And the only thing is that if you get the one that – is sticky it's a little bit tough to pull on and off um but if you have somebody there to help you know or you get used to it hmm? does it attach to your chair like where do you attach it to your chair yeah it attaches to your chair so there's like a bottom bar on the bottom or even like my, this chair has like a side one that it's attached to so you yeah there's different bars and like it bends so you can like change it there's different like you see how there's different like clasps so you can like look at what kind of bar you have and what works best, what you're gonna use it on, stuff like that. Um, and I think it's really helpful. I love this thing. I am I'm obsessed with it. Um, yeah, so that's super cool and helpful to have. So our third question is going to be about the bedroom and just kind of some stuff that we do inside of the bedroom, some kind of things that we have. Um, we don't have too many things for this one, but 
Um, Nikki sent in a computer desk. So you can get that on Amazon as well. And how is this helpful for you, Nikki? The computer desk? Yeah. Oh, that computer, I was like, wait, what? That desk I use, it was, I was looking for a desk for my room or vanity and all of them were like too low. And I knew what type of height I wanted and that one was like the perfect height. So I just wanted to show it because I thought it, I can slide under it and so can Ashley being in a power chair, which is pretty cool. She doesn't, she's not allowed to use it, but if she wanted to use it, she can. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, and that's, that's like super now cool. where I do my makeup and stuff because before our, our tables in our house were like too low, so I couldn't really get under it and it was like very uncomfortable. So like, that's been a game changer for, and I love doing my makeup. So. Yes, I think that that's so cool. And like something that I have that helped me is is the bed trays. So instead of having something, because I, I wasn't in a room for a long time that was even big enough for me to have like another desk inside of it. I was like, um, you know, just staying inside of a little room a lot of different times or at somebody else's house. So this little bed tray really helped me be able to have somewhere where I can eat. It, it goes like right over you. There it is right there. It goes right over you um, and it helps for my makeup. It helps for whatever I want to have. And it's just like the perfect type for me when I want to be inside of my bed and not be off the vanity. So I got super, um, I feel like spoiled with this and comfortable with having things like on my bed with me and doing things. And then the second one next to that, I just use that to like carry my food, um, maybe to transfer it from one sink to the next sink. Um, I use that little tray and I think it's just helpful so I don't spill my stuff around. Um, Cause I can't tell you how many times I freaking burned my leg. Um, so do you guys have anything, spe any specific furniture that you guys use Jessica um, that you can slide under? So what I did about my desk or my vanity was I just went to Ikea and rolled under all of them. And then found the one that works. Um, because sometimes it's annoying too if they have like a tiny little drawer that has no function. Like, um, but at the beginning of my injury, I had um, I had like a, a rail. So I stayed in my normal bed. I didn't get a hospital bed, but I couldn't get up, so I needed that rail. And um, it's like a board that you put under the mattress, and then on the side, the rail's there so that you don't have to medical bed, you have your own bed, and you just add the rail. Um, and that was a lifesaver at the beginning because I couldn't get myself up um, without it. And I didn't want to switch beds because I slept with my son. And then, what else do I have in my room? I think that's the dirt. So my mattress, um, I just have the top mattress. I don't have the bottom. So that it aligned with my chair all the time. And the way I only have one mattress is my family put plywood so that I wouldn't, it would be at the height that I wanted yeah that's super cool i think like sometimes you have to take off of um the stands like on my bed i had to take the stands off so sometimes they will have like a little bit of elevation and so just make sure you're checking that and like lowering things i think things for your height help so much more your bed your shower chair whatever it is when it's the same height the transfer is just a little bit yeah, sorry if you guys hear background noise. My dog got super sick last week, and so he's just like needing my attention 24-7. <laughs> it's a little frustrating. So sorry if you hear some background noise when I'm talking. Um, I want to shout out the chat really quick. Let's see what's going on. So uh, Mickey answered us about the light bulbs. Walmart, it was less than about $10 for the light bulb. Um, and let's see, LM Hill, Jessica, you are great at letting people know what you need. I'm trying to be better at that. It's important to be confident and be able to express. Totally agree. Um, it is hard to, I think, find your voice again, but once you do, it's very empowering um, with this injury. Um, Peter says, even after a baclofen pump, my spasms are so bad. I have to strap my feet in when I sit in my chair. 
yeah, some people's spasms um, are harder than others, and it's kind of like a back and forth game in this computer, in this computer, in this community um, of nerve damage and spasms. Because some people are like, "Oh, I hate my nerve damage. I wish I just would be able to deal with the spasms." And people's spasms are like, "Oh, I can't deal with my spasms. I wish I just had nerve pain." You know, so it's just one of those things that is irritating and in your face. And I think it's easy to focus on, you know, but it's really important to be busy and not look at it as something that's negative about you, but just something that is a part of you now. That's how I look. Uh, Mickey, I would highly recommend using those to prevent drop put. Drop put, I wish I had known years ago how important they are. I agree. I did not know the first couple of years how important drop foot was neither, but those braces are really important. Um, Andrew, I always need to have an organizer because I've had a stint of cancer this last year, colon and bone cancer. Yeah, it can be really extremely hard to deal with medicines and keep organized. So that's why I think that you should look through a couple of different pill organizers to really see what's best for you. Some of them were too big. I would need like to take them on the go, different stuff like that. So really find the right one for you. That's what I would say about that. Um, Mickey says scissor breaks are the best. I think for, for paras, they're, most paras recommend them. Um, Andrew, I always have a lap tray and sometimes a cup holder. Yes, those are the best. Mickey, then there's crazy people who don't even have breaks on their chair. I've definitely seen those people as well. I'm like, whoa, 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 you're a little too risky for me. <laughs> um, Ashley says, I'll still use your desk, Mickey. <laughs> She's using it right now, Magic. <laughs> um, Let's see, Andrew, I actually custom made a desk for myself. I've always been handy, it was difficult at first, but I was still able to make a custom desk. Yes, totally agree, work things out, see what you can play with, see what you can attach, see what you have around the house. One of the links that, I put, that I'll put down below, it will be the second one. Um, it will be the Triumph Foundation and then this one, I think it's called Handy Help. And the reason why I love it so much is basically he's finding ways to create tools and they're really cheap and they're really helpful. So I definitely would check that out um, if you're a handy person or you're interested in them. Okay, perfect. Um, so let's bounce back a little bit. You guys are so active in the chat today. I really appreciate you guys sharing your guys' tips and tools for anybody that's gonna be watching after this. It is really helpful. And, and if it's like a newly injured person or somebody that doesn't have a community like we have in California, I think these things can be extremely helpful for them. So feel free to shout out anything you guys want inside of the chat. And the last thing that um, for the bed that I wanted to talk about was just these um, cubbies, these storage cubbies that I have that I feel like are really, really helpful for me. Um, it was hard for me to have like my clothes away from my bed at first. So now I have these drawers like literally everywhere. So I have the cubbies and then I'll have the three drawers on the top of my cubbies with my clothes in it and even one on the bottom of it. And they just help me out those little ones so much. They're cheap. I love them. Those cubes, you can always buy more of it and put it however you want. And, and I think it just helps to have something by your bed um and something that's sturdy because it's just like unrealistic not to like want to have like a drink or like something there just to like grab you know my own my ointment my medicine whatever it is um so yeah i really like those as well okay let's move on to the fourth one we're running a little bit of late to date guys sorry um but let's get these tools in um so what tools do we use inside of the kitchen? Let's see. We already put in... Okay, let's do the silverware. So these silverware... The silverware that you send in, is that something that Ashley uses, Nikki? Yes. So. Yeah, so um, Ashley and Nikki both sent... I mean, Ashley and Maya both sent in these cool utensils. There, um, There's one of them. And I put them, I added one with both of them only because they have different ones. Maya's has a strap to it and um, Ashley's has finger holding. So these are really helpful as well. Uh, Maya, you want to talk about how you use it or how you came across this silverware? Um, so uh, the one that I sent in is the U-cuff with the strap around the hand. And I actually, they showed me in the hospital it was originally like a super expensive one that was, I looked it up and it was like $50. 
but we're able to like find these ones on Amazon for $13 and I'm sure there's some that are less. I was just kind of choosy about the picture that I showed you guys, <laughs> but, um, and I don't use this anymore. My hand spasms enough to hold my spoon or my silverware in place now. Um, because another thing about me, I'm kind of weird. I don't use forks. Just, I never have, it's not an injury thing. I don't know. <laughs> But, um, so that helped a lot to keep my spoon steady when my wrist was too weak. So my wrist was like wobbly a lot and I couldn't hang on to anything, but now it's strengthened quite a bit. So, yeah, that's super cool. And Nikki, does Ashley still use these right now? Yeah. So actually in the beginning, she used what Maya used, but, um, when we would go out, she didn't like using that. Because, I don't know, I guess it made her feel more disabled, but that's another topic. And mm -hmm. <laughs> she found these. I don't know how she found them, actually, but I think they're pretty pricey. But, oh, man, I don't want to do this. But how she knew how her fingers are, she could put them into the fork. Mm -hmm. And it for her, she feels, tells her it makes her look more, um, like, normal, so to speak. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, um, totally. I need your dignity. And they're really, they're really cool utensils like um they work and she's able to like do food by herself so yeah i agree i think that it's really cool and like um not as noticeable as the other ones i've definitely talked to newly injured people who have more of an issue with it um and like feel the same way as her it's not anything abnormal <clears throat> And I will also attach a link in the bottom of somewhere where you can find a bunch of different tools. There's like knife cutting tools. Jessica, you've been injured for a while. What do you use as, a as utensils? So for me, I have a lot of strength in my fingers. So I just use regular utensils. I know, I know when I first got injured, um, I, what I used, cause I, I can't, it's hard to use smaller things. So we just added thickness to everything or um, some type of rubber so that it would kind of be tacky and I could hold it better. Um, but I think I, I totally get what Ashley said because even like, I remember she like when she said to eat better and I was like, I just want to look normal eating a pizza, but that's really hard. So. I think one of the big sometimes when I'm eating, um, I always hold on to the bottom of the table so that I have a little bit more space. Um, but you tend to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, I totally agree. And I feel like a lot of quads have that problem, especially in the beginning, because a lot of in the beginning it's pretty normal for people to be feeding you, you know? And so going outside of public places and having whoever next to you like feeding you, then you associate it with like, oh, being a little kid, everybody's looking at me, why can't I just eat normally, you know? So uh, of course, all these extra things go back inside of your head, you know? Um, so yeah, I think that it's totally normal, but also there's different stuff to help us, right? There's different tools, you know? And just try different things. If you don't like this thing, try something else, you know? And like, um, what's cool about being injured right now in this like generation, I want to say, is there's a lot of things. People are constantly coming out with new stuff right now. And so it's really important to like be looking up, asking questions, seeing different stuff and seeing what's new. Um, I really like going on newmobility.com, which is like a magazine and they have new products in there all the time. I really like checking them out because you get stuck sometimes with the same thing and it's not even the best that you could use. You know, sometimes there's something cheaper, more accessible, you know, so definitely check them out and like see what's best for you. So the next thing we have are hot plates. These definitely help out a lot of people. Maya, you want to talk about it a little bit? Does these help you cook independently? Yes. Um, so, well, not completely independently, but it gives me a lot more um, independence that I would in the kitchen because I can just set it on my desk, roll up to my desk, and um, the dials on them are actually really accessible. I picked this one for that reason, and I was really happy when I got it because it's really smooth. Um, even the ones that you turn on and off, that one I was kind of worried about because I was like, you may have to push it in and turn, 
but it actually turns like pretty easily. Um, so it's really accessible for me just right here at my desk. It doesn't get like the bottom of it doesn't get super hot. So it's not, I don't have to worry about it burning the wood of my desk or anything like that. Um, and it has two burners so I can cook more than one thing at a time. That's really cool. I love it. <laughs> I think you're muted, Brianna. I am muted. Oh my goodness, I'm a mess today. <laughs> um, Jessica, do you use, um, do you cook on the stove? I do cook on the stove. Mine isn't too high. Um, it's at a good level. I think the only time I have issues if I, if I use like big pots, which I don't usually do, I usually try to just make sure that whatever pots and pans I'm using um, are, are shorter just because I want to be able to see what's inside and what I'm doing because sometimes I can't. Um, but I still use a regular stove. I think for me, it was always just learning how to use my core and over learning where to hold on to my chair while I'm leaning over to check on things. Um, a lot of just getting to know your body and how uh, you can work with it. So I still even like knives and stuff. I will chop up a whole chicken and still use a regular knife. I just don't chop like other people. Um, I had to learn how I could work my hands, um, how to use my tenodesis and stuff. But I don't, I think I always remember obviously to have a board on my lap to make sure that nothing spills and I don't burn myself. So I usually always keep a cutting board on my lap. That's the only thing that I always suggest to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I use the cutting board or the tray um, a lot. I even like use pots to mix stuff instead of like a little bowl. I'll use a pot and put the pot on the tray and then mix it like that. <laughs> That's what I do a lot of times too. So I could reach it. And then um, I also use my handheld mirror to look inside of my pots. That has helped me a lot. I've seen different attachments that people have where they have like mirrors by their stove so that they could see what's going on. I know that Mickey talks about see-through um, pots and pans, but I haven't found a really good set yet. So if you guys know of any websites that sell sturdy ones that are see-through, I would love to hear about it. And I'm sure everybody else would as well. Um, so feel free to leave that in the comments or the chat. Um, so moving on, just talking a little bit about like cleaning and stuff like that. Um, I added in some uh, the type of broom and duster that I use because I feel like learning how to clean as well. You have to learn your body. You have to figure out when to put your brakes on, when to use one brake, you know, how to lean forward, different stuff like that, you know. So for me as a para, I learned that the big broom with like the big sweeper part is a bit more easier for me to use than the smaller one only because it kind of gets the job done. So I'm able to put my brakes on and I just like sweep it up, you know, until like one spot, undo my brakes, like move a little bit more closer, you know, and it just like helps me out, but it can give a little heavy. So I don't know how useful it would be for quads. Um, but I also use a standing dustpan as well. And that helps me, oh, there it is right there. The middle one is a standing dustpan so that you can just sweep it inside of there instead of having to bend down to the floor because I used to, um, I used to bend down and have to like sweep it inside of it. So that really helps. And the last one is just a vacuum cleaner that goes in um, and, and it helps you just like sweep stuff up really good. Okay, um, so yeah, we're almost done with this. Um, Maya's going to have to get going soon. So let me make sure that there's no more pictures that you specifically sent in. I don't think so. It's just the bag that you were talking about. If you want to, do you do dishes or anything like that, Maya? Actually, I've been like super spoiled with cleaning duties. Like I really haven't had to learn how to do many of them. Like um, I'll help like make my bed and fold laundry sometimes, but other than that, like, no, I need to learn yeah, that yeah. because I'm going to work yeah. usually. 
No worries. I know it's easy when you have your parents there. Then I mean, like, it's no big deal. You know, when I moved out away from my parents, it was such a difference in what I had to contribute, like buying even soap and toilet paper and all this stuff. You don't realize that you have to get all that stuff by yourself when you're living by yourself. You know, so it's a little bit more stressful, a lot more to clean, you know, a lot more to do. So it's definitely hard, you know. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you joining on, Maya. Um, no worries if you have to hop off. Um, love if you want to say anything or say bye. Oh, Oh, let me mention your Instagram. Maya's Instagram handle on the screen is different. So we're going to make sure to put her right Instagram handle inside of the description if you guys want to check her out. So make sure to do that. Yes. Um, thanks so much. I've had great conversations today and I've also learned some different tips and tricks that I'm going to use in the future. Um, Nikki, I'm definitely about to go order that um, cup holder. <laughs> so bye yeah nice I appreciate what this is all about you know um I, I think i always learn different things different tips when i go on these and i watch different videos you know so i think that that's why it's so important and so cool to do so um yeah wrapping up on the last question we kind of just talked about different things that help us when we're leaving the house so i didn't have too many tools i added in a little backpack that um nikki was mentioning i ha i you could just search little backpacks and there's like tinier ones that basically fit on the back of your chair so when you're leaving the house i think that that's really important to to bring and also i carry like a little mirror even either inside of my little bags or inside that backpack because you just never know when you're going to need a little mirror um is there anything specific jessica that you bring with you or you make sure that you have when you're going to a friend's house um so i mean i'm gonna be jumping off soon too but i uh -huh. just for mm -hmm. me so i've talked about this before guys i have adhd so remembering things can be hard. I have made it a rule that as long as I always have catheters, I'm good. Um, and so I, ha I always have a box of catheters in my car. Um, I always make sure that um, I have a space in my chair where I can put catheters. I'm not great at carrying things, purses, um, things like that. I, I do recommend, even though I'm not the best at practicing, to always have like extra set of clothes and things like that in your car ready to go. Um, I have gone on trips and not had enough things. And I'm that person at CVS buying suppositories or, um, you know, buying new clothes. So you guys don't be like me. That's usually me. Um, so, yeah, to go out as long as I have mm -hmm. catheters, I'm free. That's kind of how I've made up my mind. Um, but I will be jumping off. I do want to say that I think, you know, you know, Nikki brought up something that Ashley said, how certain things um, don't make her feel normal. And I know for me, I've been injured 10 years and I've become very comfortable with just always voicing what I need and not really caring too much about how I look or don't look. But I know that a lot of our attachments, whatever our tips and tricks may be, they can make us feel a little vulnerable, especially at the beginning. I know eating is a really huge one for us quads. For me, I just wanted to look normal in it. So, um, you know, it takes time to get comfortable with a lot of the things that we need. But I just want everyone to know that it does get better. And the more... The more you go out and the more comfortable we get with people um, even staring, uh, the better it gets. And just voicing, people aren't so bad out there. So that's all I have to say. Yeah. And I Yeah, thank you, Jessica. Yeah, we just have a couple more things um, to talk about, but I appreciate you so much. You're inside your car and Jessica was running late from her appointment. Um, and so I think that it's so amazing that you still got to join and share your tips because I get a lot of wisdom from you as well. <laughs> so I really appreciate it so much. Of course, right. love. You take care. Bye, Nikki. Bye, Ashley. Definitely. Okay. It's always me and Nikki. Usually Ashley's here left too. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, that's basically what I have. My biggest thing is just to have extra stuff. You know, um, I think that that's so important. Something that Jessica talked on, have extra water bottles. I like to have changes of clothes. I'm the type of person that is always regretting not bringing something, whether it's like, am I going to have a headache? Let me make sure I have Tylenol, you know? Let me make sure I have an extra case of place 
an, an extra piece of clothing. Sorry, my dog is right here and it's just driving me crazy. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, Nikki, when you leave the house, I know it's been during COVID, but maybe when you go to um, your family's house or anything, is there anything specific that you need to bring with you or make sure you have in your car or make sure that they have at their house? Yeah, so whenever me and my sister go somewhere, I have, we both have like little bags like you have behind our chairs. And um, usually we have like the catheters, um, change of clothes. What else? Just like random things that we're gonna need when we're out and about. Mm -hmm. like if you clothes are probably more style related, mm -hmm. the white. And yes. That. And then we have like. I was just saying, like I agree. Things. Sorry. <laughs> and those two things we always have, and either sometimes we'll both bring a bag, sometimes we won't. It depends on how long we're gonna be out, but definitely. And then always, like I said, in my dad's car there's always usually a slight board. So if we are at someone else's house and we need to get on a different surface, we have that. So those are like the major things that would like make sure we need. And I always need my water. Yes, I agree. And like just for going to the house, the last thing I would add is if you could get a picture of their bathroom setup, you know, I think it's a weird thing, of course, to ask for. But when I go to new places, all of a sudden I'm like, oh damn, do I fit in their bathroom? You know, and, and I'm always like that panic, that panic in my heart, you know? So if I can go into a new family's house or anything like that, I also at my family's house bought them extendable door hinges, which makes the door open up just a bit more. It's unnoticeable to them, but makes a huge difference for me. And those you can find on Amazon as well. You just type in extendable door hinges. So make sure you guys check that out. And um, let me just mention again that I will put in links to different websites that have a bunch of different things and um, products on there in the links below. So make sure to check them out. They're great resources. And if you guys have any more, add them to the comments. If you're watching this after our live, just add them in the comments. If you have any suggestions people are always open to tips and tools so yeah so this was a great show we got in a lot of information we were running a little bit late and went a little bit over but i hope that you guys um appreciate it and that it helps you out in your life um you know that's what we're here for to help you along your journey um, and to give you guys something kind of that we didn't have so um let us know <clears throat> Miranda said, thank you all so much for doing this. Have a blessed evening. I got to go too. Y'all rock. We appreciate you guys joining. Um, and we'll be back in about two weeks. Sean will be on next week um, on Tuesday at 3.30. And then I'm on every first and third Thursday at 3.30. So make sure to stay tuned for our lives. And also follow our new live to roll dot official profile on Instagram. And um, we'll be putting updates there as well. So I appreciate you guys all joining today and take care. This is live to roll. Bye.